Welcome to our Sound for Video session. In today's session, we are going to talk about the new MixPre 2 series and just cover some of the new features that are included. This is the MixPre 10 2, and we will also talk about how they apply to the MixPre 3 and 6 2 series as well. The first and probably headline feature is the tire over here. No, I'm just kidding. That's not really. <laughs> there is actually the headphone knob is over here. There is a new uh, little thing they put on here. They're calling it a tire. It looks very much like a Lego tire, to be honest, if you ever played with those as a kid. And it just fits over that. And in theory, is supposed to make it a little easier to operate that when you have it in a bag. We'll see how that goes. Actually, the new feature is the wide dynamic range recording capabilities of the Mix Pre 2 series. And let's show you how to set that up. If you come into the menu, come over to the record menu, go to the second page there, and then you see the bit depth. We changed the bit depth to 32-bit float. It does say that it has to reconfigure the Mix Pre. We go ahead and tell it it's okay to continue. I did that by pressing the headphone knob here on the side. And it basically has to reboot to get it into 32-bit float mode. I wanna talk a little bit about this new feature. I prefer to call it wide dynamic range as opposed to 32-bit float. The reason for that is that 32-bit float refers to an encoding format. And that's not the only thing that enables wide dynamic range recording. There are other things involved here. Each of the microphone preamps have multiple analog to digital converters. And that's, I think, probably the bigger piece of things. And then, of course, you have to record it to 32-bit float to be able to take advantage of that new, wider dynamic range up to 142 decibels of dynamic range. So in any case, that is not something that I would necessarily recommend doing all the time. I would use it when you feel like you need it, um, but it's not necessarily you're gonna need all the time. So for example, if I'm recording a podcast, generally I wouldn't think I would need that. I can gain, set the gain appropriately. I've got limiters to manage things if people get you know unexpectedly louder than I anticipated in most circumstances. Just the one thing to keep in mind is that A, not all applications can handle 32-bit wave files, so you need to check and make sure yours does. And then secondly, um, you're basically deferring some of the effort to post. So if you do want to have that kind of um, security policy, if you will, or that uh, insurance policy to be able to record the amplitude that goes beyond zero dB, then by all means use 32-bit float mode, which again, I would prefer to call a wide dynamic range mode. And then in post, you'll have to do some work to bring that back down. A big question I've gotten, well, if I send the audio out from my mix pre to my camera, do I still get the benefit of 32-bit float? Well, I think the answer is probably no. I need to test that, but um, you have to keep in mind that the camera would have to be capable of managing that wide dynamic range as well. And cameras barely have decent or passable audio circuitry <laughs> in most cases. Um, and they certainly don't have the ability with, you know, to, to manage really, really wide dynamic range in the audio. So the answer to that generally is gonna be no. Definitely go and experiment with it to see what you can find, but my expectation is no. So there's a look at the 32-bit float first. So now if we come back in here to record to the bit depth, the bit depth setting is now at 32-bit float. So that is how you do that. I'll go ahead and change that back to 24. It'll do the same thing. So it has to restart the unit to reconfigure it for 24-bit. Now. The next thing that I wanna go ahead and cover are the limiters while we're here. So first of all, when you go to 32-bit mode, you do not have limiters available to you anymore. They're automatically turned off. And I think some people were kind of scratching their heads about that. It's important to consider that you really probably wouldn't want those when you're recording to the wide dynamic range 32-bit float because the recorder should be able to handle the dynamic range that you feed to it. Now, in most cases, it's gonna be your microphone that runs out of dynamic range before the Mix Pre does, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Certainly when we're talking about wireless microphones, um, you know, obviously they don't, generally don't have wide dynamic range capabilities, and most microphones can't go to 142 decibels of dynamic range either, so, you know, some things to keep in mind there. All right, um, so let's go back in here and we'll see now that if we come to record, our bit depth is now set to 24-bit, great. Let's take a look at the limiters. If I come into the menu here, scroll to the third page, go into system, 
and here's where I access the limiters. Now, out of the box for Sound Devices, Sound Devices has operated primarily in the sound for film world for a long time, and um, mostly for recording dialogue and sound effects is what most of the users have been doing, but they decided to open this up to accommodate a variety of other situations. I think sound effects in particular is one, music recording is another one where you may not want to have the kind of hard-coded limiter settings that they have in most of their devices. So they've now opened it up so you can use the factory defaults, which are really sort of optimized for dialogue recording, to be honest. But if you're gonna be recording something else, you can change them. So if I tap on this, I can choose to turn the limiters off, I can leave them at their factory settings, or I can change them to custom. So let's go to custom, and we'll go back. Once we go to custom, this button is no longer grayed out. It now says custom limiter, so we can tap on that. And we have three different settings, ratio, release time, and threshold. These are the default settings right here. So the default setting is a 20 to one ratio. The release time is 100 milliseconds and the threshold is minus six dB. Let's talk about what those mean. So first of all, the threshold is the point at which the limiter kicks in when the waveform exceeds that. So if it gets louder than minus six dB, then the limiter kicks in and starts doing its thing. 20 to one is how much the limiter will attenuate the signal that exceeds the threshold. So for every 20 dB that goes over the threshold, that will be squashed down to only one decibel over the threshold. That's what a 20 to one ratio means. Now, you might think to yourself, wow, that's pretty extreme. And yeah, it is pretty extreme. <laughs> but that's kind of the purpose of a limiter is to make sure that you don't clip and distort your audio. So typically for, for dialogue, that's usually a pretty decent sound. Release is the amount of time it takes before the limiter stops reacting after the waveform has dipped below the threshold again. So it, you normally want for dialogue, I actually typically set it a little bit higher than that for dialogue. So a lot of times, let's just look at the range here. We can go down to as low as 50 milliseconds and as high as a second, one or 1000 milliseconds. So typically for dialogue, I have it somewhere around 200 to 250. Um, but you can you can tune that however you like. Now, again, for dialogue, you may just want to leave it at 100. It's entirely up to you. Experiment and find what works best. But here's the thing. So for for music, sometimes there you know there may be a case in particular for music and for sound effects where you want to you may want to shorten that if you're going for some sort of pumping effect or maybe lengthen it out if you want a different effect. So. That's what this is really for. So again, for dialogue, if you're just doing dialogue recording, a lot of times I would just recommend leaving it at the defaults. You can also adjust the threshold. Again, this is the point in amplitude at which the, th the limiter kicks in. You can go as low as minus 12 dB. Whoops. And you can go as high as minus two dB. Again, the default on that is minus six. I think minus six is usually a pretty good place to do that. That'll give you enough headroom. So even when it's squashing it by 20, for every 20 decibels it goes over, it will squash that down to one decibel over the threshold. Um, you know, you 6 dB generally gives you enough room to take care of almost all things that will make its way through the limiter. That is to say, all the transients, all the mod, you know, modulation that makes it through the limiter will generally come out un, unclipped. So that's the main idea there. The ratio you can also change. You can change it to infinity to one which basically means it's a brick wall limiter. That means nothing gets past the threshold. It all gets squashed down and cut off right at the threshold. Um, that's pretty extreme, and usually I don't like the sound of that, <laughs> but that is an option there if you need it. Again, in some cases with music, you might want to use that. There's also, um, the default setting, by the way, is 20 to one, as we talked about before, but there's also this 10 to one, which is a little gentler and actually moving closer to kind of compressor range and away from limiter range. So that one's gonna be a little bit more gentle and not compress quite as much for the parts of the waveform that go above the threshold. So that's an option there as well. So there's a look at the custom limiters. And again, in my case, I typically, for dialogue recording, I will typically leave that at the factory settings. All right, new for the Mix Pre 3 and 6 is internal time code. So there's a time code generator built into not only the Mix Pre 10 now, but also the Mix Pre 3 and 6 2 series. 
And the biggest question I've gotten on that so far is, well, how do I configure that? Well, the first thing you need to do is you go into the outputs menu. Now, this is a little bit different. So the MixPre 10 has dedicated timecode input and output uh, connectors here on the side in the form of BNC connectors. On the MixPre 3 and 6 Series 2, however, you don't have those. So on the MixPre 3 and 6, you have to use the stereo output instead. So there's a limitation here. You cannot send audio to your camera and at the same time send time code to your camera, just so you're aware. Um, what you can do is you can jam an external time code generator from your mix pre and then disconnect that and connect it to your camera and also feed audio out of the stereo output to your camera at the same time. But if you're trying to not purchase an external time code generator and just feed it directly from the mix pre, you will use up that out the stereo output port. The way you do that is you come into the outputs menu. If I come back in here in the main menu, go to outputs. Then in the outputs menu, you will find a setting that is called stereo out mode. That allows you to switch between sending audio out of the stereo output or LTC timecode, which is longitudinal timecode or linear timecode, I've heard it called both. But that's just basically sending a timecode signal out of the 3.5 millimeter output, and then you can connect that up to your camera. And for example, the, the, the biggest question I hear it is for the users of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, you plug that into the 3.5 millimeter microphone input on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K or 6K, and then that recognizes, oh, this is time code, and it starts, it's uh, essentially jams or connects its clock to the signal that's coming out of the Mix Pre, and that's how that works at a high level. So that is good news for the Mix Pre 3 and 6 Series 2 users. Now, one of the limitations on the original series Mix Pre 3 was that it could only record up to a sample rate of 96 kilohertz, and I say only with kind of a laugh, but if you do want to record up to 192 kilohertz, you come into, let's do that again, you come into the record menu, and here's the sample rate. And you can see if I scroll to the second page, I can go all the way up to 192 kilohertz. That's true for the Mix Pre 3. Mix Pre 6 and Mix Pre 10 2. All of them can record up to 192 kilohertz. Now, question when would you do that? When would you ever record at 192 kilohertz? Well, the truth is, I generally don't. I generally will record sound effects up to 96 kilohertz because if in post they're going to really process those sound effects really heavily, then that gives them those extra samples. To, to work with. Normally for dialogue, I still record at 48 kilohertz. So uh, that's my way of operating and that's how a lot of production sound mixers operate. Um, but for if for whatever reason you wanna go up to 192, you can do that just by going into that menu. There is also this auto copy to a USB drive on the side of all of the Mix Pre units. This was only on the Mix Pre 10T before. Um, what I've done is I put a 32 gigabyte thumb drive here in, and all you have to do is actually come into the menu, scroll to the third page, and then there's a USB drive menu. We tap that. We need to format the card, so we press edit and then format. It'll ask you if you're sure you want to do that. It'll ask you again. We pressed OK. This is actually formatting the thumb drive in XFAT format, uh, which it needs for all the things you're going to be doing. And it's important to actually format it here in the Mix Pre so it gets everything set up correctly. That way, now, from this point forward, every time I do a recording, that is automatically recorded to the SD card in the back of the Mix Pre. But when I stop, it will also make a copy of that to the USB thumb drive. So I'll have redundant copies. So that's how the USB thumb drive backup works. There is one last setting, and that is the 10 second pre-roll, up to 10 second pre-roll. What we do is we come up here into the record menu, and you can see on the second page we have this pre-roll time, and I can select anywhere between zero seconds and 10 seconds. What does this do? For those that are not familiar with this feature, so the way this pre-roll works is that when I start recording, it will take the 10 seconds prior to the time I started recording and include that in the recording as well. That is to say, it's always listening. And then as soon as I press record, those 10 seconds before will be recorded to the file that I just started recording. Really cool feature in case you're a little bit late to hit that record. 
Sometimes on sets, things, things get a little crazy, and it's nice to have a feature like that to kind of save you. And so that's what that feature does. The question is how, you know, should I set it to 10? Should I set it to five? Well, it's up to you. <laughs> um, 10 for me, there's not really that much cost. Um, if you're recording all eight XLR inputs, plus the 3.5 millimeter input all to 192 kilohertz, all in 32-bit float, well, you're going to go through SD cards a little bit more quickly in those 10 seconds. Could potentially make a difference, but generally, I wouldn't find that to be an issue. So there's a quick overview of the new features on the 2 Series Mix Pre. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. We'll talk to you again next week.